What's going on, guys? One of my favorite things to do is to come out to this shop and drink coffee in the morning times. Now, when it's cold, uh, one of my favorite things to do is come out here in the afternoon and drink coffee when it's cold. But, uh, but anyway, I like to come around out here and piddle and uh, think up ideas and build stuff. And I get some prayer time in when I'm out here by myself. So, let's talk for a minute. But before we do, if you will, hit that subscribe button, share to your friends, give me the thumbs up. I'm trying to grow this channel, trying to put out as much content as I can. Okay, let's talk about it. If we have an EMP, what are you going to do? I mean, they say that all electronics won't work. So... I've been knowing about this for a long time. I never built one, but I know what to do. I have, uh, for years and years, I've been knowing about this. So I thought today we would build one, a small one. So let me show you something. This right here is FM transmitters. So, some people call them walkie-talkies. In fact, I call them walkie-talkies. And about, I've had these for about, I don't know, uh, excuse me, it's starting to get hot. Um, I've had these for probably two, yeah, about two years. So, this is what they look like. And I keep them in this box. This is the box that came in, and I pull them out and test them. And about every six to eight months or so, I pull them out and charge the batteries, make sure the batteries are good, make sure everything's working. And so I, this is what they, there's the battery. That's what they look like. So I have two of them. So, and I have rechargers right here. All right, so. They say that if an EMP hits, that uh, all electronics are not going to work. Now, I don't think that's about, I don't think that's actually accurate about all electronics. Because from what I understand about an EMP, it's an electromagnetic pulse. And what it does is it's essentially a lightning strike. And I think some of the older stuff would work because the contacts are bigger. And if you, if you think about it in the terms of the electronic things are basically put together with like thousands of little fuses because the contacts are really, really small. So when it hits, it's going to be like a jolt. And so all those contacts will just burn and burn in two. And so nothing, none of the electronics will work because, because it, it's the, the fluidity of the electricity is not going to work. So... What are we going to do about how to protect our stuff? Well, see this ammo can right here? This held one belt of 50 cal ammo. And see the old style? I think this is actually from pre-Vietnam. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm not, I'm not schooled on the <laughs> age of the box. But the, when I was in the military, we had the kind that flipped up on the side. And so I joined up in 1990, so that's been 32 years ago, 33 years ago, excuse me. So anyway, but this this on the side, I, I, I want to say this is from the maybe the 50s or early 60s. But anyway, this ammo can is metal, and it's solid, right? So what we want to do is we want to put our stuff inside of it. So let me... I'm not even sure if this box is going to hold it. Let me, let me just check that. I'm cutting video. No, it's not. But that's okay. I'll just put them in a... I'm gonna, when I do this, I'm going to put all this stuff in a Ziploc bag and just set it inside. Not a problem. But this right here, these two-way communicators, they have thousands of little contacts inside of it. So if an EMP hit, <laughs> I think this is going to be trash. So I definitely want to be able to communicate because if something, 
if we have a grid down situation, uh, communication is going to be key. And no, these won't talk very far. I think these will talk about, I don't know. I think they'll talk two to five miles, actually. I, I don't think it's any further than that. I'd have to look it up. But I, when I got these, I actually got these for a wedding, but with the mindset, hey, I'm going to keep them, and I'm going to use them if something happened. And so these have been sitting in my, my pantry for years. And then I've kept the batteries up. The batteries are good to go. I keep them charged, Keep make sure everything's working. Uh, just a side note, if you have food, uh, if you want to rotate that food, if you have electronics or some kind of mechanical gear, you want to get it out from time to time and make sure it all works. Uh, if you don't keep your, your stuff in working order when the time comes, it's not going to do you any good. Anyway, okay, back to the build. So I'm just going to set this off to the side and then... This right here is what's called a Faraday box. That's what it's going to be. Let me just set this off to the side. So, you have your stuff. Inside this box will be your electronics because this is solid metal. So, when it's closed... The thinking behind the Faraday box is when the lightning strikes it, it's, it's going to hit this metal on the outside and it's going to preserve what you, excuse me, what you have on the inside. So, there's some schools of thought about this. And to the best of my knowledge, one school of thought resonates with me because I do have an electrical background. And this actually makes sense the most. If lightning hits this, where's it going to go? So if, if it's not grounded, it's just going to hit. Well, if it hits, it still could damage what you have inside. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying could. Because so, I'm not an expert. I just have lots of ideas and have done lots of research and I listen and I read and I do all these things because I want to be prepared just like you want to be prepared. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a ground for it. So if the shock hits the box, it's got to go somewhere. So we're going to put a lead on it and we're going to make a ground for it. Now, one thing about saving old stuff, <laughs> years ago, this is, this is probably eight years ago, my wife's cousin's father-in-law died, and they were cleaning out his shop, and he had all kinds of knickknacks and parts, and I just could not stand to see him get thrown away. So he had all this stuff, and this was actually one of his boxes. And I think he had, I don't know, four or five of them. I got them. Nobody wanted them. They were going to throw them away. And so, anyway, they were just in there selling the good stuff. But, you know, in most people's minds, you know, they don't see this as good stuff. So, anyway, this right here was a ground to an old-timey lamp. And it's copper wire, which is what you want. So, what we're going to do is we're going to attach this copper wire to the box then oh yeah we've got an alligator clip and we're going to attach the alligator clip just like so and then I'll show you what we're going to do okay we're going to take this alligator clip and connect it to the box and you see this copper wire running right here it's running down, it's going through the building. And see, I have two ground rods down here. So I'm going to do this on the inside, but all we're going to do is connect the box to the alligator clip and then connect the alligator clip to the ground wire, just like so. And so if the shock happens, 
it's going to direct the energy to the ground. Still enjoying that coffee. Okay. We're going to take, see we have a nut and a bolt. And so I'm going to put this in the lid. I don't want to pierce the outside. Because just in case we end up doing, you know, you could use this box for some, something else. This lid comes off, you put another lid on it. That way we don't damage the actual box part. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drill a hole. Now you see this is hard metal. I've got some used motor oil here. It's always good to, to lube the bit. So I just dip a little bit of motor oil on the bit and that's going to help it cut better. See? Went right through then. Just an FYI, if you're ever drilling things, so that's perfect. If you're drilling things, then uh, you, uh, if you drill them dry, and it, you're working with metal, if you drill it dry, uh, you stand a chance of damaging the bit and making it dull, and it won't last as long. Next, what we're going to do is I'm going to take a screwdriver. Let's show you the hole. See, here, here's the hole right there. Then I'm going to take a screwdriver. And I'm going to take this hole right here. And I'm just going to scrape it up. Because if you don't have a good contact, it's not going to do you any good. So if you just have a wire on there and it's not, it's not connected good, it's just not, it's just not working. You just want to scrape it just around the outside. And then it don't have to be great. You just want to scrape the paint off so you got a good contact. Let's wipe that off. Then I got just a little bit of dielectric grease. See this grease right here? Just that's it. It's all I want. Just I put a little dab on this t-shirt right here. I'm using for a rag. That way I don't have to have everything over here. So then, what we're going to do, let's, let's pull the lid off. See these lids? They just slide off just like so. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take the bolt, stick it through, and we'll start the nut. Now, I hope you use a lock nut. I like lock nuts because, especially if something's going to be moving around, in this case, probably wouldn't make any difference. But if you don't have lock nuts, it's real easy to just put a little bit of super glue, any kind of glue. You put wood glue on it, it just don't matter. Just anything to make the, the threads harder to turn. So, so when it dries, the nut won't back off. So then, I'm going to take this wire, this copper wire, and I'm going to wrap it. And I'm going to wrap it clockwise, like this. So it won't unravel when I tighten it up. So then, put a wrench on there. feel like I need three hands. If I had three hands, I could probably get more done. And look at that. You see this, guys? This right here that ain't going anywhere. And it's got a good connection with grease. We'll set that off to the side.
I actually think this is a little bit too long, so I'm just going to cut it right here. By the way, <laughs> I found these on the side of the interstate by an by own ramp. So I turned off of the main road and going down the own ramp. And as I was turning, I saw something laying right on the edge of the road. And I was like, man, that looks like some pliers. So I just pulled over on the own ramp and walked back, found these. These have been some good ones. I've had them for, I don't know, that was probably about two or three years ago. And they've been great. But anyway... So now we got to make this bear so i got the jacket off of it just like so then i'm gonna twist it and then i'm gonna take this excuse me i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna twist it together like so then you know what? I'm going to twist that over one time. I want to make sure all your connections are good. Okay, so my as I was shooting the, shooting the last of the video just a minute ago, my microphone cut out on me. The battery died. So essentially, this is what I have. I've got all my communications equipment in this one spot inside this box. And we're going to shut this box down. It has a lead to an alligator clip, and then I'm going to stick it right here, and I'm going to take this, and now it's connected. So I've got this box is now grounded. Thanks for coming along with me today, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm doing all kinds of stuff around here. I don't do, just do homesteading. I don't just do preparedness stuff. I do everything that you have to do to survive in life. Now, granted, I don't know everything, but I'm just learning and I'm surviving just like you are. Thanks for coming along again. God bless.